Philadelphia got 30 points off those 20 turbos, Marv. Shot clock to three. Perkins. And Odom able to tip it to Bryant. The Lakers at 39 and 9. They have won four in a row on this road trip. Here's Bryant spinning his way. And a loose ball foul, says the outside official, Monty McCutcheon. And it is on the Lakers. That's two on Odom. Well, uh, Kobe Bryant trying to pick up Ray Allen's second foul. He was very close to getting an offensive foul right there. But now this is something that Phil Jackson, with Odom picking up two quick fouls, going to Josh Powell early. You know, the loss of Bynum, he's the more of a pick and pop type of player for the Lakers. And you can help off to him and clog the lane a little bit more because he's not a threat to put the ball on the floor. Pierce try to set it up. Perkins throws right back outside. Shot clock down to six. Pierce from way downtown. Rebounded by Gasol. I'm not sure Doc Rivers was real happy with that shot. Still a lot of time on the clock when he shot that very deep three. Well, we've got six minutes here, and Pau Gasol still has not taken a shot. Coming off 31 points in back-to-back -back games. That exact shooting, 12 for 17 for the 31 in both games. I and think he just got the memo. Yes. <laughs> Was that a fax or a text that you just sent, Reggie? Both. No, Reggie only faxes Spike Lee. Or text, I'm text. sorry. Yes. Here's Allen for three. He's been the most consistent, Marv, of the three stars this year. He's shooting the ball career high this year from the field. Here's Fisher from downtown. And the Lakers lead by one, just under five and a half minutes to go in this opening quarter. Rondo getting inside. Rebounded by Gasol. Bryant feeling for Allen. They, they clear it out. Finds Gasol. Beautiful pass from Bryant. That's what happens. The ball goes in the post. Kobe gets it, and you catch yourself ball watching. You start watching uh, Kobe, and guys start cutting to the basket. That's when he's dangerous with those passes. So the Lakers able to handle that opening burst by the Celtics. And they have a three-point lead. Allen. Rebound Powell. Josh Powell in his fourth year out of North Carolina State. Guys made the rounds with the... Clippers last season. Gasol off the head fake. And Phil Jackson takes a timeout. It's a 15-5 run for the Lakers. And they are up by three as we come up on four and a half to play in the first. And Ray Allen, one of the best shooters this game has ever seen. You're going to have to lock and go with him. Fisher doing a bad job of coming up the pick. Ray Allen knocking down the tray. Get all this for a buck each. And by Call of Duty, World at War, ready mature in stores now. Welcome back to TD Bank North Garden in Boston on a bitter cold night. Down to 15 degrees. And uh, we are fortunate to be indoors. And now, Doug, time for tonight's predictions uh, presented by the Motion Picture Push. Well, Marv, it's strength versus strength. The Lakers offense, they're number one in the league in scoring. Boston's second at opponent's points, just right behind Cleveland. Points in the paint. The Lakers are first. Boston is best at defending the paint. So we'll watch strength versus strength tonight and assist turnover ratio. We talked about that. Both of these teams thrive off getting in the open court off turnovers. They take care of the ball. They're both very efficient basketball teams on the offensive end. And energy and depth for L.A. This is their third game in four nights last night. Powell plays 45 minutes. And we already mentioned for Boston and KG missed two games with the flu. Kind of looks winded already. And can a pair. Bryant and Gasol last two games 159 points. And for Pierce, the last two games, 32 points. So if I was playing poker, I do believe three of a kind does be two pair, but you never know. All right, here's Rondo on the move. Goes all the way, wild shot, handled by Gasol. Lakers by three as we come up on four minutes to go in the first. Bryant, long rebound, taken by Rondo. You know, Rondo's really pushing the ball tonight, but he's not making good decisions right now. He's taking two or three really bad shots. So, Reggie, he's got to take that in there. If he doesn't like it, pull it back out and then get his team into the offense. Pierce with the pull-up. Powell rebounds. 
Celtics with only two scores their last 12 possessions after the good start. Here is Walton and Garnett with the rebound. I've seen Kobe Bryant go out Ray Allen a couple times. Then Luke Walton gets him down, Ray Allen on the post. I don't know something Phil Jack pretty scoop adds to that Laker lead. This is game five of a six game road trip. They're in a stretch play seven of eight on the road. Sunday afternoon they uh, finished it up with a game against LeBron James and the Cavaliers in Cleveland. Seven points for Ray Allen. He is so much more acclimated this year to this offense. I think Doc Rivers even would tell you that he just feels more comfortable utilizing his strengths this season. Here is Powell setting up a rainbow. It's a three on one for the Celtics. Allen for three. Well, that time Rondo pulled it back and gave it to a wide open Ray Allen on the three on one break. And everyone's saying, wait a minute, Ray Allen was wide open on that three point shot. That is the hardest shot for a shooter to shoot because you're somewhat out of rhythm. You're more of a catch and shoot kind of shooter as Ray Allen is. When you've got too much time to shoot, percentages go down. Although there are ironic similarities between Bynum's knee injuries the past two years, both following perhaps his best game of the year against Memphis, colliding with his own teammate, one on the 13th of January, 1-3, the other on the 31st, 3-1, there's no correlation between the injuries themselves or the rehab process. I called Bynum this afternoon. He was already back in L.A. beginning his treatment. He said last year it was the left knee. It was a bone bruise and a dislocated kneecap that affected the internal mechanism, which required surgery surgery in May. He said this time it is the outside of his right knee. He says it's a partial tear. He says he thinks that he will be rehabbing for the next 10 days, working on movement. Then he will be much better off. And he says, count on this, I will be back before the end of the regular season. And Andrew was on the midst of really coming on, averaging 14 points, eight rebounds. I got a call from Andrew Bynum later in the day, and he <laughs> just wanted me to pass on to Craig. Please stop calling me. I'm not quite sure <laughs> I would have picked up that. It's very annoying. That call if I would have saw Sage's number <laughs> coming through. He uses a pseudonym. Wow. So Trevor, about uh, Trevor Ariza has come on for the first time. Fires one up. Rebounded by Rondo. Lakers up by three as we approach two minutes to play in this first quarter. This is the second meeting of the regular season between these two clubs. That's last touch by Fisher. It was in L.A. Christmas Day. Lakers beat the Celtics 92-83. That snapped the Celtic franchise record 19-game winning streak. Boston 27-2 going into that game. Jordan Farmer now coming on for Derek Fisher. Kobe with 27 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists against the, uh, the Celtics. And the reason, that's a blocking foul, it is on Garnett. The reason that this game is so significant here tonight, should these two teams meet again in the finals, and if it comes down to a tiebreaker, if the Lakers win again here tonight, they have the tiebreaker. Well, and Phil Jackson has uh, not uh, minced any words at all. He said, we want the home court throughout. Mm -hmm. He thought that had they had it last year, they would have won the championship. So they want every team to have to go through L.A. this year to win a championship. And obviously, Boston knows how important the home court advantage is here. Mark, remember last year in the playoffs, they went to go seven games the first two rounds. They went all four at home, did not win a road game the first two rounds. One big baby Davis who comes off a very strong performance the other night against Philadelphia has checked in. Gasol try to finesse it. And here comes Rondo. Farmer back two on one. And Farmer breaks it up the call for the foul. Nice job by Rondo pushing the floor. Pierce doing a good job of getting on the wings trying to finish the play. Paul Pierce to the line. Well they're saying he did not catch the ball before the foul, so it's side out for the Celtics. It is a non-shooting foul. So Reggie, I would have liked to have seen Rondo take that ball and make Farmer right. come play him and then drop it off. He tried to make that lob and Farmer read it the entire way. Here's going to be a foul on Farmer. Be the second in the last two minutes, so that'll be a two-shot foul. So a, a break here for the Lakers in the fact that Paul Pierce is not shooting the free throws and Rondo, who is not good, a good free throw shooter on the season at 63%. Well, what was the interesting stat in that first game, Coach? 
that the Celtics only shot eight free throws in that game. This is a team that's uh, seventh in the league in free throws attempts. Let's take a look at the upcoming national TV schedule Friday on ESPN. It's Denver at Washington, followed by Golden State at Phoenix. Sunday on ABC San Antonio at Boston. And then the Lakers at Cleveland coverage starting 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then Tuesday on NBA TV Fan Night coverage starting at 7 Eastern with NBA game time. Bryant over Allen. So Kobe firing up a total of nine shots. He's four of nine here in this first quarter. That one slipped out his hand. Oh, Rondo with a beautiful move. That's what Doc Rivers wants more of him, attacking. Because when he gives the ball up, he becomes a liability as a spot shooter. With the ball in his hands, you've got to guard him, and he's a much tougher cover. Paul Gasol hit from behind by Kendrick Perkins. Takes Jordan Farmer, does a nice job here. A little change of pace and a little reverse layup off the rim. Finally gets one to go. A couple early in the game he didn't finish, so gets to the free throw line, sees the ball go in, and then comes back with a nice little reverse layup. Boston had a foul to give. A minute left in this opening quarter. It's the Lakers and the Celtics from Boston. Nice touch by Josh Powell, the assist for Kobe Bryant. Well, he's a good uh, mid-range shooter, uh, and I think that uh, the Lakers are starting to find out they like his energy. They lost Turry off to free agency to Golden State, and they like that kind of energy from him coming off the bench. And he's tough. You know, yes. He's not going to take a lot. He's going to get in there, bang, and rebound. Allen twisting and turning for that shot. Bryant uses the screen to the crossover. Yes. And he comes. When he, when it, in transition like that, Kobe Bryant, especially when the pick and roll happens that quick, you got to be able to adjust and talk. Celtics aren't talking on the defensive end. Easy shot for Kobe. Ten points for Kobe Bryant. Allen with room, passed on a three, and here is Davis. Powell rebounds. The Lakers can hold for a final shot of this first quarter. The Lakers have to be thrilled after the Celtics jumped out to a quick start. They recovered. Kobe's done a nice job, 10 points in this quarter with a chance to push it here even more. He finds Ariza, and he took that extra dribble at a cost. Not able to get the shot off. He lost sight of the shot clock. So that is the end of the first here in Boston. The Lakers with a 23-20 to 20 lead. Kobe Bryant, the high point man with 10. Ray Allen leads the Celtics with 7. Back in Boston, the NBA on TNT Thursday is being presented by the United States Marine Corps. And moments ago, Craig caught up with Laker head coach Phil Jackson. Well, Coach, you told us before the game you're worried about Boston's quick starts after their 9-2 lead. They scored only twice on their next 13 possessions. What was the key to your defensive turnaround? Luck. Really, our transition defense was bad. We left Allen open for shots. We just they just missed shots. We didn't do anything special. What about the offensive end? Kobe's already taken 10 shots. Is this one of those games where he feels that he has to put the shots up and make the points? Well, if Lamar's going to be bashful six feet from the basket, you know, he's going to set that and he's going to take some shot. But no, we got to get other guys involved. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. Phil Jackson and his staff will be coaching the uh, West team of the All-Star game a week from Sunday. Second quarter getting underway. The Lakers are up by three, and a foul is called as uh, Ariza uh, made contact with Pierce. The red-hot Eddie House has come on along with Tony Allen, so Doc Rivers makes some changes. And Sasha Vujicic is on Eddie House, and Phil Jackson did this a, a few years ago when uh, Vujicic with the Lakers, obviously, and Eddie House was playing for Phoenix, and uh, Vujicic really locked him down, did not give him any easy shots, so we'll have to watch that matchup tonight. Now Vujicic switching off to Pierce, and it's called for the foul, so that'll put Pierce at the line. In the first quarter, the Lakers 11 of 23 shooting. Celtics, after the good start, went the other way. They finished 8 for 23 from the field. Vujicic is going to have to move his feet, especially on the pick and roll with the 2-3, because if you're Paul Pierce, you're going to move his feet and reach out there, you get the foul. 
Well, Paul Pierce is so good at baiting into those fouls. He's being played by Ariza, so we'll have to watch that matchup. So some interesting matchups now, and uh, we'll have to see how when both teams go to their benches, the ball, uh, usually when the Lakers are healthy, I think they have one of the best benches in the NBA with that speed and quickness and firepower they have. On the other hand, a talk with Doc Rivers prior to the game. We asked, are you still looking to make a move? The name Stefan Marbury has certainly uh, surfaced. There's been a lot of talk about Marbury eventually starting with the Celtics. That will count, and the foul. Now, if you guys were coach or general manager of Boston, no question about Marbury's talent, but would you make that move in light of Marbury's history of, let's say, causing chemistry disturbances? I think as a coach, you would be very, very cautious. I think that Doc Rivers has gone to his three-star players. They have all endorsed the deal. And I think what they're also saying is they would be paying him very little, and any bump in the road, they could get rid of him immediately, so he'd be on a very short leash. I think that would be the positive thing. Can you get a short-term uh, gain from Marbury? I don't think it would be a long-term gain, but could you get a short-term gain and help yourself maybe win another championship? Foul is caught on Leon Poe. For more on the Stefan Marbury saga, uh, let's go to Craig Sager. Craig. Well, Marv, I was just talking to Danny Ainge about that situation. I said, have you talked to Marbury? He says, no, we've discussed the situation. I don't want to do anything until he gets out of his contract from New York. And then when I see where our team is, have we talked about it internally? Yes, but I've not talked to him, nor have I made any decision whatsoever about whether he would help or hinder our team. I believe you're just way off on that shot. Here is House setting up. Odom is back playing with the, the two fouls. Davis changed his mind. Pierce guarded by Ariza. And a bad pass from Davis. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Reggie, reportedly, Boston General Manager Danny Ainge reached out to you once again to see if you were interested in coming back to provide instant offense. How serious was that inquiry? Well, he didn't reach out a couple weeks ago. This is something as Kyle Gasol knocked down the shot, foul on Leon Powell, but he had called every time we'd come here to do a game. He'd ask, what kind of shape am I in? And <laughs> as Pal Gasol is backing down right there, using that size and length, but there's no seriousness to it. I like being over here between Coach Collins and you. This is a nice, comfy job. I get to hang out with Coach. <laughs> well, Ainge I'm, did say he was actually checking out the availability of your sister. Yes, Cheryl, I know. Be out. Doug, did Danny Ainge give you a call? No, he did not. <laughs> and I was down on the elliptical today for 80 minutes and I did see. not see Reggie. <laughs> and a blocking foul. It's on Farmar. Well, Coach, I will say this. You, you have a lot of trust in Stephon Marbury because if I was a general manager or a head coach, just coming off a championship, I don't know if I would make that. Even though you have a strong locker room with the Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce and Ray Allen, I, I don't know if I trust Stephon Marbury coming in here and just disrupting it. If I'm, I'm New York, I wait till right to the last minute when you have to be on a playoff roster, and if you're not on it, you cannot play, and just play, di play uh, roll dice March 1st with uh, to see how much he wants to give up to really play in this league this year. Cole could not finish, kept alive by House. And chased down by Ariza. So you'd apply a little squeeze there. Absolutely. I find out how bad you really want to play, how much money are you willing to give up to play this season. Two minutes gone by in the second quarter. The Lakers are up by six. Eric Fisher back for Jordan Farmar, who picked up a quick three fouls, and Gasol is hit. We talked to Phil before the game, and he said, you know what? Gasol can score down on the post against the team, but he does so reluctantly. Remember last year how Phil was on him about finishing strong, don't flip that ball at the basket? And uh, this is what he has done the last couple games. He and Kobe Bryant. Look at this shooting. Look at the free throw. 159, Reggie, you talked about it. Can a pair beat uh, three of a kind? And this is what's happened over the last two games against New York and Toronto for the Lakers. A shot by Ariza, rebounded by House. And that's what Phil Jackson is talking about, the reluctancy of Lamar Odom to take that shot. You get a, the ball inside the paint, you at least got to make an aggressive move. Off the tip, here comes Fisher. Fisher all the way, that counts, and the foul. So Derek Fisher will go to the line. The Celtics are also now over the foul limit very early, only two and a half minutes in to the second. 
Boston, when they get themselves in trouble, they turn the ball over. Marv, you talked about it a while ago, 20 turnovers against Philadelphia for 30 points the other night. And it, when they don't turn the ball over, they're such an efficient offensive team. They shoot the ball well from the field. They're second best field goal shooting team. They're third best three point. They get to the free throw line 26 times a night. It's those turnovers that prevent them, Doc Riverset, from being the leading scoring uh, team in the NBA. Three point play for Fisher. Lakers with their biggest lead up by nine. Chris Mim playing only his 15th game of the season has just come out here as Pierce. Nice move. Chris Mim in his ninth year out of Texas. Missed most of the last two years with ankle problems, but Phil Jackson telling us that he will get a run against some of the bigger teams, and there's Mim playing at home. That was a great catch. This young guy's been through all kinds of foot problems, foot surgery. I talked to Gary V today about what they had to do, that heel. They basically split it in half and realigned it, and he has really fought back as Pierce is trying to keep this team in the ball game with Garnett and Ray Allen resting. And a loose ball foul is called. It's on Odom, and that's three. On Odom, three apiece on Odom and Farmer. So Paul Pierce there just sort of fakes going to the screen. Chris Mim, a day late there to try to get to him. Nobody protecting the rim. That's where you miss a guy like Bynum shot blocking, and Pierce takes advantage. Boston down by nine. You know, it's a blessing, you know, to do what you love and, you know, to have moments like this. You had the Boston Garden, which I never played in, you know, the form. And then there's this building, and you know this is the last one that, that holds all the memories, you know. And then you know, I think tonight, um, you know, it felt great to get that. Read. And you could hear the chance of MVP for Kobe at Madison Square Garden. Kobe Bryant surpassing the 60-point uh, game by Bernard King of the Knicks back in uh, 19. 84 Reggie I know you are very upset that the garden crowd was was cheering Kobe Bryant we talked about this the other day and at the garden these days it is uh, usually a combination of of appreciation and even though the Knicks are better this season they still have obviously had a difficult time of it the last few years nice effort by Cole and able to score but the climate is so different now for some of the star players because of the exposure because of commercials the likability for guys like uh, Kobe Bryant and LeBron James and, and and Dwayne Wade so most arenas including the garden it's become uh, basically a, a, a situation where people are applauding well, the stars as if they're, you know, rock stars. Well, Kobe got a nice uh, reception when he came here, but I doubt if this Boston faithful crowd will be chanting MVP if he's nearing 50 points. But, you know, I just remember going into the Garden, and Coach, you played there many a times before. I just never heard a Garden crowd, a Madison Square Garden crowd, chant MVP. Now, Kobe Bryant and LeBron James, a fantastic week on Broadway. But the MVP... Come on now. Michael Jordan was cheered. Now cheered, Garden, but not chanted MVP. There's a difference. Now, a few years back, when Reggie was pouring it on against the Knicks at the Garden, perhaps even had he done it present day, even he would not. No. Actually, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> well, how about if you're Mike D'Antoni, you've seen Kobe Bryant get 61. LeBron James 52 with a triple double and tomorrow night you're seeing the Boston Celtics <laughs> Mike D'Antoni welcome to the Eastern Conference. Well if I'm, if I'm Paul Pierce I'm thinking wait a minute well, maybe if I can get warm I can get going in there as well. Kobe is back on the floor Lakers up by nine. Bryant to the pull up against Tony Allen and kept alive. Good job by Powell tipped by House but chased down by Fisher. Just been handed a note from the staff. Most points scored at Madison Square Garden. Doug Collins. Get back to it in a second. <laughs> off the steal. Here's House all the way. Nice goal. Doug put up 30 on on Christmas 1975. You probably broadcast that game, Marvelous. <laughs> Very possible. I wonder if you gave any love on the telecast. <laughs> no question. And Reggie, 39, June of 94. Another Celtic steal. House open for three, yes! Eddie House.
Krause has been on a roll from beyond that three-point line the last six games, 25 of 40. The Celtics have come roaring back. The Laker lead is down to four. That's what happens with shooters. He gets a run out and a layup, and he runs down and then hits a three. And this is when Eddie House is his most dangerous because it's an open court and you get fine people. He struggles to be the point guard, but they try to get some minutes for Tony Allen. But in the open court, no one to get him. Five straight points, and this crowd is alive. And a total of five all-star players on the parquet here in Boston tonight. Kevin Garnett for the 12th time. Kobe Bryant, number 11. Ray Allen named to the team earlier today for the injured engineer. Nelson Paul Pierce makes his second appearance. And Paul Gasol, his uh, second. Pierce is seventh, I should say. It's a 35-31. Laker lead five minutes gone by in this second quarter. Celtics finally showing a little energy, especially at the defensive end. Tony Allen wide open. And kept alive by Poe. House on a quick release for three. Rebounded by Poe and then slapped away. And it'll be Celtic ball. Poe's given him a nice presence here. The last few possessions, remember earlier he had that stick back. He got a couple loose balls uh, on this possession, and he's important to the team. Remember, P.J. Brown was the guy last year in the playoffs. This year they're going with him and Big Baby, but they need both of these guys to perform for their bench. Leon Poe in his third season out of the University of California has been a very important guy these past couple of years off the bench. Garnett, yes. Kevin Garnett back in the lineup after missing two games due to the flu. Now has six points. It's a 7-0 run for the Celtics, and they are within two. Walton gets inside, changed his mind with the presence of Garnett. Nice pass, and Powell is able to stuff. That's what Luke Walton does. He's a great passer, and he really thrives in the triangle. He understands the intricacies of it. He's a great ball mover, and he does a great job of finding open people. Garnett off the double. Nice pass. Tony Allen from Kevin Garnett taking advantage of the double team. And KG with that size when he got up in the air. Usually you don't want to pass when you get up in the air, but he found a wide open Tony Allen underneath the basket. Fisher trying to get it by Garnett. Here comes Allen. Picked off by Wolf. Bryant met by Tony Allen. And fires. Yes. <laughs> That's a three. You know how hard that shot is to catch yes. the ball out of rhythm. Reggie, you know you're a three-point shooter. <laughs> Just look and look and rise up and shoot the ball like that. Yeah, if you're Tony Allen, you've got a crowd, Kobe Bryant. I know it's, you know, pick your poison. He's going to take you off the dribble, but you can't let him get, get a wide-open three. 13 points for Kobe. Garnett finds Allen. Put down by Cole. Following the block by Powell. I really like what Powell's doing. He's playing with great energy, and he's giving them a toughness inside that they need. Lakers by three. Defense! 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 Oh, bad. Good pass. Uh, Bryant stopped by Garnett, but Gasol is right there. Well, Tony Allen needs to stop turning his head. If you're going to be playing the, the reigning MVP, you got to have hands on him. He keeps turning his head. Kobe keeps cutting back door. Nine points for Paul Gasol. They clear it out for Garnett. House from downtown. That's his second three. He brings the Celtics with him, too. You must stay attached to him. You cannot help off of him. You just cannot give him that shot, especially how well he's shooting it. Powell with a quick shot and knocks it down. And that's what, Coach, you were alluding to before. Josh Powell is a pick and pop. He has range up to 20 feet. That's something Andrew Bynum couldn't do. And he's a guy who's bounced around CBA, D-League. He's played in Russia. He's played in Italy. Played with the Pacers, Clippers, Golden State. And now the Lakers. Foul is called on Gasol. Perkins subbing in for Leon Poe, who should get a good hand for his energy, as well as Eddie House. Lakers over the foul limit. Garnett 
to the line. Don't miss all new episodes of TNT's hit series Leverage. That's every Tuesday, 10, 9 Central, only on TNT. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, Reggie Miller, Craig Sager works the sidelines. Lakers and Celtics meeting for the second and final time this regular season. Lakers at 39 and 9. Best record of the West tied with Cleveland for the second best record of the NBA behind the Celtics who are 41 and 9 and Boston with 12 straight wins. Mark, what we've seen here, at least from me at my standpoint, is Kevin Garnett has been much better coming back in. It's like he's gotten his second win. You know, he's been sick, he's been down, and these guys are so conditioned to playing, even the great ones get out of shape in this short period of time. Walton trying the teardrop. Perkins with the rebound. It's a three-on-one for the Celtics. Garnett the finish. The game is tied at 34. Coach, you talk about player picking up his second win, Kevin Garnett. How do you do that? You get out in transition. The saw goes at Perkins, and he took the shoulder. The foul on ah, Perkins. That is his second. Both teams are over the foul limit. Well, in transition, Doc Rivers wants the run, and Kevin Garnett doing a good job, as you said, two games off because of the flu. Conditioning is always the first thing to leave you. But for the game of this magnitude, you burn off so yes. much energy. Both teams are playing better now. And even Doc Rivers said, you know, I watched the Christmas Day tape. He said, when I was there, I thought it was a pretty good game. I watched it on tape. He said, we didn't play well, and really neither did the Lakers. He said, they, they ended up winning the game, obviously. But he said, he didn't think either team played that well that day. And that was the game that stopped the Celtic franchise record 19 game win streak. Lakers back to a two point lead. Again, the double on Garnett. It's deflected, stolen by Fisher, eluding Pierce, and banks it home. How good is Derek Fisher? That guy is such a pro. You want to talk about the big jump the Lakers made last year? It was obviously the great internal improvement for some of the younger players, but Fisher coming over for Utah and stabilizing that backcourt. He and Kobe with the championship experience. Nice pass from Pierce. Perkins on the handoff is foul. Foul on Fisher. Kendrick Perkins, only a 56% free throw shooter, will head to the line. Now, Kevin Garnett loves to pass the basketball. That's why he fits so well last year. They love to run him to the high post. Then he finds Eddie House on the weak side. Somebody made a mistake and leaves him. And then here you are. When you want to have a good fast break, if your big men run, you've got a great chance. And Kevin Garnett, one of the best running big men in the history of the NBA. Welcome back to Boston. In a rematch of last year's NBA Finals, the Lakers lead by four. Ray Allen was named to the All-Star Game today, the ninth time in his career. And if you notice, he is wearing a sleeve on his left elbow. He was in a, quote, minor slump a year ago in the playoffs. He said Rip Hamilton, Detroit, had grown his fingernails. He was scratching him every time he tried to run. He said he put on the sleeve to shield himself from Rip Hamilton. He broke out of the slump, and he's been wearing it ever since. You may notice that Eddie House has also picked up on it, and he is wearing a sleeve on his right hand. So I don't know what it is, but he says it's the key to breaking out of a slump. And in a recent poll of NBA players, it was Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, Ray Allen, Reggie Miller as the two best pure shooters in the history of the game. But I think Doug Collins, Mark, because you mentioned he had a 30-point game, he's feeling it as well. I know Doug going for the for the props here tonight, Rich. Well, you know, Marv, I knew it was a three-man booth tonight, a little tight over here. Reggie's been known to scratch and claw a little oh, bit, so yes, I brought my sleeve out this, tonight man. as well. Just I can't so you know. believe you, Coach. Man up. Are you kidding me? I'm a little soft, but that's okay. <laughs> Put my sleeve on tonight, too. <laughs> Reggie still does draw contact here, even at the broadcast table with that kickback move on the jumper. Well, I can't show you my knee pad that I have on. <laughs> Two and a half left in the first half of the Lakers with a 48-46 lead on the Celtics. Pass intended for Bryant, talk it up, Rondo got a piece of it. Walton has to let Kobe Bryant get down there and post up. Ill-advised pass. Garnett. And rebounded by Rondo. Pierce looking for the three. Bad pass, Walton, and 
able to pick it off. Those are the kind of plays that Boston makes. That was a high risk, low reward pass. You got to get a shot on that. You got a nice offensive rebound. Pull that back and get a shot. Walton with the shot for three. Those turnovers kill you. Turn the ball over instead of getting two. You give up a three. So you're going into halftime. You've made a nice run. Finish it off strong if you're the Lakers. You got to be very happy the way this first half is going. Five points for Luke Walton. Good job by uh, Derek Fisher hounding Ray Allen. Fisher touching last. Well, I like Ray Allen trying to improve his pass down to the low post right there. Here's Allen with a medium range jumper. Well, Kendrick Perkins and uh, Luke Walton, little activity after that play. So I'm Monty McCutcheon warning both of them. Kendrick Perkins is uh, known to get a few technicals, be a little rough around the basket the last couple seasons. I think Luke was upset because uh, Perkins was able to hook him from behind just a moment ago. Coming up on a minute to go in this first half. Walton gets inside. Comes back to Gasol, and it's a shot clock violation. That shot by Walton did not make contact with the rim, according to the officials. Well, Powell's got to do a job to look at the shot clock and try to get the ball on the on the rim. I think he was confused. I think he might have thought that ball touched the rim, and they got a new clock. Nice back cut by Luke Walton. It's hard to see from that angle. From that angle is tough. Leon Wood blows the whistle. They want to reset the shot clock. No, clearly it, it did. did not hit the rim. Clearly it did. And I see uh, Derek Fisher talking to official Monty McCutcheon, and he's telling him, look, Ray is shoving off too much when he's down low on the screen. On Fisher with a steal. Fisher rejected by Pierce. Rondo, Perkins rebounds, Perkins, yes. The Laker lead is down to one. And it's the offensive rebounding right now for Boston. They're not shooting a high percentage. They're getting multiple shots in this second quarter. Bryant, the tip by Gasol. There's a two-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Both teams are over the foul limit. Good job by Pierce protecting the dribble, and Doc Rivers calls timeout. He wants to set things up. It's a 20-second timeout. Well, you know, this is a great time, I think, Marv, to talk a little bit about the connection between Doc Rivers and his team. The other night in Philadelphia, had a play late in the game, called it, came out. Philadelphia took a 20-second timeout, went back. He was going to change the play. And the guys talked to him and said, you know, coach, we really like that first play. They went back to the first play and Ray Allen hit a three. So it's it's the connection you have. And it's a fine line you walk, Marv, because as a coach, you have a gut feeling, obviously, about what you'd like to do. But you'd also like to listen to your players. That point in time, uh, they, they said we like it. They hit the three and they won the game. So it's a little bit of the connection that this team has with their coach. Well, it was this past Tuesday night as the Celtics beat. The 76ers on that uh, three-point shot by by Ray Allen with five tenths of a second remaining. Boston on a couple of long streaks uh, this season. They have won their last 12. They had won 19 in a row. That was stopped by the Lakers Christmas Day in L.A. Well, keep your eye on Derek Fisher. He will not leave Ray Allen. He will be velcro to his jersey. He's not going to give him an open shot. And be careful of Eddie House. Pierce got it inside. That will count. 1.9 left in the half. Walton takes it down. And the ball will go back to the Celtics. They'll have it in their front court with still one and nine ten seconds. Remaining in the half. Well, this could be a big possession. It could be a four or five point play. Point play. Yes, you could. know, they end the half. So uh, the Lakers, after really playing well, have, I thought, fallen prey a little bit to the physical play of the Celtics underneath the basket. And silly turnovers for the Lakers as well. All right, here's Ray Allen for three. That's the end of the first half. 
halftime here in Boston. The defending NBA champion, Boston Celtics, leading the Los Angeles Lakers 52 to 51. Check of the high point men, Kobe Bryant 13, Paul Gasol with 11, Kevin Garnett with 10 and nine apiece for Ray Allen and Paul Pierce. Balanced scoring for the Celtics. Let's go to Craig with Ray Allen. Well, Ray, a great half. You guys came back. You have the lead, but you're pretty disappointed about missing the last shot. Very. I mean, that was a big shot going in the half. It was a great momentum builder for us, getting the steal and then running down here. Rondo uh, getting the score, but we got to play a little bit better. You're named the All-Star team this year. Already before lineups are announced, they're chanting, beat L.A., beat L.A. What's the atmosphere like here tonight? How important is this game? Well, this has really been the atmosphere all year, Craig. It's, these, these guys have a long memory. Uh, the playoffs were, were good to us. They were great to us. And the fans are here in full force tonight for this game. I know you never miss two shots in a row. If you get it coming up, you'll make the next one. Yeah, I'm working on it. Thanks a lot. We'll take a break. The halftime report coming up next with Ernie Johnson, Kenny Smith, and Tom Malone, the T-Mobile halftime report from our studios in Atlanta. Defensive three is, is called, and they felt with Bynum in the lineup, we gave him a little bit more toughness, that the things were changing, but that is still a question about the Lakers. Well, Marv, along those lines, Phil Jackson normally works his team into the season. This guy's won nine championships, been in the finals 11 times. Normally a guy comes to training camp, and you sort of manage yourself through the season. He started training camp out, maybe had more two-a-day sessions than any team, sending the message to his team, if we're going to win it, we have to be tough. We have to be ready to, ready to go out of the blocks because they had such a great home schedule early. They've got a lot of road games coming up here, so he wants that home court. But, Coach, how much does it change not having a seven-footer, 300 pounds, oh, yeah. Andrew Bynum? Does the psyche change a little bit? Do you think this same Laker team can get back to that same level without him? Oh, I don't think that. Uh, no, I think they need him, obviously, because he changes the game in that paint. Another quick release from Ray Allen. Celebrating. The announcement earlier today that he has been added again to the All-Star roster. Here's Bryant. He kicked it by Perkins, but Gasol is right there. Nice follow there by Paul Gasol. Block shot. Clean up the rebound. Allen's pass was kicked. It is a kickball, says Leon Ward. You know, I always think of games like this, Reggie. You, you, you look at the stat sheet, which team can find a way to get some easy points? Whether it's second chance, points off turnovers, getting to the free throw line, a couple open threes. And I think that's what's going to change the whole pace. Somebody's going to go down a run with some easy baskets here. Well, the sec Celtics did have that 13 0 run, but the Lakers coming right back. Boston up by three with five minutes gone by in this third quarter and an offensive foul against the Celtics. It is on Garnett. Look out. Garnett gets involved. And Garnett and Lamar Odom going at it. Offensive foul looked like on Kevin Garnett trying to set a screen for Ray Allen. And then the little eye dance, as I call it, between Lamar Odom and Kevin Garnett. Well, I think what you're going to see is some quick whistles here now, because yes. there, there you see Kendrick Perkins down here bumping the soul off the ball. So these referees are going to have to call some fouls here to clean this up a little bit. Get very testy. And we get the, uh, the whistle away from the ball. Monty McCutcheon indicating the foul on the Celtics. It's on Perkins. That's his third. And Kendrick Perkins, the coach. a guy who has been involved in a number of situations this season. I mean, I'm watching it. Ryder, he bumped him four times. The referee gave him the benefit of the doubt. Finally, he called him about the fifth. And here they are bumping again. It's but he's be doing a... it right in front of official <laughs> McCutcheon. I mean, I take it he wasn't sumi cum laude. <laughs> and that's a blocking foul. Charge to Rondo. And that's Rondo's fourth foul. So here's a decision that Doc Rivers is going to have to make. You bring in Tony Allen or Eddie House. Boston is over the limit. Most technicals this season. Celtics lead the way with 67. And Perkins is right there with Rasheed Wallace in terms of the individual lead. I don't mind it though. I don't mind when my big fella is aggressive. Absolutely. You got to be smart about it, right. but you kind of like.
Kevin Garnett and, and uh, Kendrick Perkins being that physical presence. Right. Well, that's, that's what the, the Boston Celtics felt was the difference last year in the right. painting. Phil Jackson talked about it. Oh, the law misfired, recovered by Garnett. Shot clock to six. Pierce gets inside, came up short, handled by Gasol. Bryant looking for the pick. This is what Lamar has to do. Be aggressive when you get the ball 15 feet. Don't settle, don't pass the ball. Foul is on Pierce. That is his first. Celtics over the limit with 6-11 remaining in this third quarter. Composure. And this is a time where you got to take a deep breath and you got to call on your championship poise. You can't let the emotion of the game get you away from it distracting you from playing basketball. Odom only a 61%. Free throw shooter. Now here's Sasha Vujicic getting set. A check back in. Played briefly in the uh, first and half. And, and he's coming off a look walk, so Phil Jackson will go with a small lineup. Timeout taken. 6 11 remaining in this third quarter. Lamar Odom, Kevin Garnett having a mild conversation. The eye dance. They're eye dancing. At the line, Rajon Rondo sitting out after picking up a fourth foul. How about Kobe Bryant? Just one field goal the last 18 and a half minutes. Yeah, and his only point actually was on the uh, loose ball foul away from the play when Rondo made the uh, foul as uh, Derek Fisher was scoring the layup. Celtics up by one as we approach six minutes to play in this third quarter Eddie House who had the hot hand of the first half and his eight minutes of play is back on the floor Pierce for the lead Garnett stripped from behind by Bryant Bryant played by House they double up here is Kobe and on the back tap handled by Ray Allen Pierce with the off-balance shot. Lakers try to recapture the lead. Vujicic, Fisher in the backcourt. Here's Bryant down low, posting, and it's a three-second violation. So Fisher had a tough time of trying to get the ball down low to Kobe Bryant. Right here, he's calling for the ball, but it just comes a little bit late. You know, Ray Allen's done a nice job on Kobe. He's got good size, quickness, and he's got a hand in his face on all of his shots. Now, obviously, he's getting a lot of help from his teammates, but his primary defense tonight has been very good. And he's been getting at the other end as well on his offense. Pierce off the head fake. House for three. Eddie House with his third three-pointer. He has been on fire from beyond that three-point line. He now has 11 points in all, and the Celtics lead by four. Defense! 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 Odom with the cross court, shot clock to four, to three. Fisher, the box out by Garnett. Here comes Ray Allen. Andrew Perkins did a good job of making Derek Fisher just move one dribble. Nice ball movement. Allen. Perkins trying to keep it alive. And it is deflected out. Last touch by Odom. I tell you, if you like def defense on the last couple possessions, both of these teams right. rotating beautifully, right. forcing right. difficult shots, getting hands in face. I mean, this, this has been uh, some really good defense here in these last couple moments. Big baby Davis. Check back in, played very well the other night in Philadelphia. Started at power forward with Garnett sideline by the flu. Pierce stripped. Odom got a piece of it. Fisher flips it down. Here's Bryant met by House and the foul committed by House. 
Again, the turnovers, that's one of the things that's keeping the Lakers in the game. 19 points off turnovers. So you look up at the numbers, the Lakers have 66 points. If Kobe scores here, they're going to have 21 points off turnovers. And that's what Doc Rivers talked about at halftime. And you don't want Kobe Bryant going to the free throw line. Only his second and third free throws. I have not heard any MVP chance for Kobe here. <laughs> really? In Boston. I wonder. Well, you can be part of NBA All-Star 2009 with your friends on Facebook. Choose your view and chat live on Facebook only at TNT Overtime on NBA.com. Well, Jordan Farmar back in the game, he really struggled in that first half with the fouls, only played a little under four minutes. So he has been playing very well. That speed and quickness coming off the bench. Let's see if he can give the Lakers a little bit of a jolt. Well, if he's going to give him a jolt, he can't leave Eddie House. Eddie House on fire from long distance. He can't be caught with his head turned. Farmer returning last week from an injured left knee, coming back much quicker than anticipated. And the foul on the Lakers as Pierce took a shot to the head. And I don't know about that call right there. Lamar Odom saying, look, I was just standing in the lane with my hands straight up. And Monty McCutcheon saying, no, you had your hands extended. Good call by Monty McCutcheon right there. His hands a little it, bit extended. Interestingly enough, when you look now at the Celtics, Paul Pierce is going to probably do a lot of ball handling, and they're going to let Ray Allen and, and House play off the ball. So now Kobe has to play Paul Pierce. I mean, he's played Rondo tonight. He's played Ray Allen. He's played Paul Pierce. And forget about the energy he expends on the offensive end. I mean, that could take its toll. Three games and four nights in three cities, the amount of minutes he's played. The foul was committed by Odom, so he has four. Celtics with a five-point lead. They're trying to make it 13 straight wins. They have the best record in the league at 41-9. and nine. Lakers best in the West, 39 and 9. Gasol making the turn on Davis. What a beautiful move. And he's going to be able to get that shot all night because Baby's not going to be able to contest that because of the height differential. Davis at 6'9 and uh, Gasol at about 7 foot. Garnett off the first pass. Pierce. How about the great extension he gets on that jump shot? When he was a young player, he shot a line drive. Kevin McHale worked so hard with him, getting that shot lifted, getting elevation on that shot. He's a great mid-range shooter. And he's come on, coming back from the flu. 16 points for Garnett. Back shot by Bryant. He has 17. The Celtics, 74. The Lakers, 71. Well, he has 17 points, Kobe Bryant does, but on 7 of 19 shooting. They clear it out for Pierce, played by Bryant. Shot clock to four. Allen with two on the 24. Back comes Vujicic. Vujicic and Farmar at the guards. Bryant is now up front with Odom and Gasol. Foul committed by Garnett. That's four on Garnett. And now the Lakers take a timeout. Now Gasol going to work and all he has to do is take his time and get it as a rhythm. Big Baby's going to try to push him off the block. Take your time, shoot over the smaller player. A sweet shooting Pal Gasol. Knocks that little jump shot down. And then on the other end, Kevin Garnett flashes into the middle. Look at the extension on that jump shot. Beautiful plays by both big men. Boston holds on to a three-point lead. Knocked away, but Nelson gets it. Outlet to Worthy. Rambis. L.A. comes to Boston and wins the world title. Open his age. Bird goes for three. Five seconds to go. Magic with a hook shot. Scores with two. Batter number 17 soon to be raised to the rafters. 
one of the best rivalries in all of sports combined. The Celtics and Lakers have won 31 of 62 NBA championships. These two teams have met in 11 NBA finals dating back to the Lakers days of George Mikan in Minneapolis back in 1959 and the Celtics won the first eight championship series from the Lakers and they have captured nine of the 11. How about the Lakers 12 of 19 from the free throw line tonight make that Whoa. 12 of 20 the Celtics perfect 13 of 13. Lakers as a team at 77 percent which is pretty good. Davis given the shot, turned it down. Here is House. And he breaks it home. That looked long from this angle. Well, what they want to do is chase him off that three, and he pulls up and knocks that shot off the glass. So Eddie House has got his whole game working tonight. 13 points off the bench for House. Oh, on a switch, picking up Bryant. The long rebound fielded by Pierce. House with no hesitation. Another three for House. And where's Jordy Farmer in this picture? You've got to stay attached to Eddie House. That is why he's on the floor. That's his fourth from three-point territory. Farmer, yes. Jordan Fulmar from straight away. And the Celtics coach was saying, do not help in the post. Do not give him that kind of space. But, Reggie, what happens with Eddie House is every time the Celtics run, you get caught in cross matches. If you don't talk, that's when he gets all those shots. Celtics up by five. Shot clock down to five. House eluding Bryant for three. And the rebound hold down by Paul slapped away. And Allen on it, lost it. Oh, Fama put it behind the back. It's a four on three. Vujicic for three. How about this? I mean, wow. that's Vujicic and Farmar and Eddie House. We <laughs> should have the, the three-point shooting competition here tonight while the game's going on. Well, that's big for Vujicic's confidence. Been struggling from the field. Big shot on the road. One second differential between the game clock and shot clock as this third quarter rolls down. Celtics by two. And as Pierce pulls it back, Why are you foul reaching? is called on Vujicic. You play defense with your feet. I, I don't know if that ankle is still bothering him, coach, or, you know, he's had some leg problems. But he's doing a lot of reaching tonight, Sasha is. It is a non-shooting foul. They have that foul to give. So the Celtics have five and three ten seconds remaining. And here's Rondo checking back in. And always keep your eye on the guy throwing the ball in. If Ray Allen's throwing the ball in here with five seconds to go, chances are something's going to happen here where he's going to be involved to try to free himself up for the shot. Oh, shit. Pierce eluding Bryant. Pierce to the bucket. Yes! Looks like Reza took the hit on the Pierce drive. You forget how strong Paul Pierce is. Reggie, he's in great shape this year. His weight is down, but he is a power guard, small forward. He gets that big, strong body on you. He has the ability to not only take that contact, look at the shot after really being bumped by two Laker players. That's just a strong play by Paul Pierce. He is six of six at the line. The Celtics perfect at the free throw line. They've been all 13. And now we're hearing the chant of MVP for Paul Pierce. And he was the MVP of the finals. Two and three tenths seconds remaining in the quarter. Poe gets to it. And that's the end of the third here in Boston. The Celtics 81, the Lakers 77. You are watching the NBA on TNT. Welcome back to TV Bank North Garden in Boston on a, uh, a rather nippy 14 degree. It's a bitter cold night here. 
in New England. The NBA on TNT Thursday has been presented by the United States Marine Corps. Just moments ago, Craig Sager talked with Celtic head coach Doc Rivers. One of the greatest rivalries in all the sports. Uh, they're chanting beat LA before the game starts. We've had double technicals, all sorts of stuff going on. What do you do in the fourth quarter? Do you have to calm them down? Well, we got to play with composure, too. Uh, we're getting a little frustrated with some of the calls out on the floor. Um, we don't feel like they're letting us play. And, but that's fine. We just got to keep playing. And I thought we got a little bit frustrated. We don't mind this game the way it's going. But we just got to keep our composure. Kobe Bryant with 22 minutes without a field goal, only one of six in that third quarter. How have you changed your defense on him? He's just missed shots. I mean, really, and that's scary because it's a four-point game. He, he's missed shots. You know he's going to try to take the game over in the fourth quarter. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. All right, thank you, Craig. Kobe getting his customary rest right now at the start of the fourth quarter. And, and this is a time when this Laker bench, uh, it's much vaunted Laker bench, has got to step forward. I mean, Eddie House, 16 points. The Laker bench, 18, which is a difference in the game. And... This is what this bench has to do now. This speed and quickness has got to get out and get some easy scores, Marv. A foul is called on Ariza, non-shooting foul. Tony Allen has a check back in. Allen and House in the backcourt. Davis with Poe and Pierce up front. So Paul Pierce, the lone starter remaining on the floor as Ariza slaps it away. And Ariza's going to have to step up to the challenge of guarding Paul Pierce. And speaking with Phil Jackson before, and he asked him, you know, how's that matchup going to go with Paul Pierce and a reason he's like Paul Pierce usually bumps him off. He's not strong enough. Shot clock is down to four. They double up on Davis. Has to force it. A reason in the open floor going one on two. And rebounded by Poe. Well, if he would have acted like he was going to go in there and dunk it, he probably would have got the foul. But he tried to be cute and double pump it. Pierce for three. And Ariza able to chase it down. We're just underway here in the fourth quarter. Farmar accelerating and Whoa. scores. What a move by Jordan Farmar. Well, that, that's what they missed when he was out. Derek Fisher had to play a lot of minutes, got worn down. Fourth quarter, they got hurt with some point guards. Farmar could really help this team. 81-79, Boston. Screen set up for Davis, passed on the shot. They double Pierce. Davis, nice lead pass for Poe. He has been really aggressive tonight. Offensive boards. He's brought a real toughness to this team tonight. Well, how about the pass from Big Baby? Yes. Big to big. Farmer putting moves on House. It counts on the foul. House picks up the foul. And Farmer with another beautiful move will head to the line. Well, he picked up those three fouls in that first quarter. Has seemed to come alive in this fourth quarter. Does a little crossover on Eddie House right here. Uses the glass going to the line to try to finish the three-point play. And Doc Rivers' biggest concern now is Kobe Bryant's resting. And if, he, if they can get him to under the eight-minute mark, and the Lakers are within one or two. Bill Jackson would take that right now. So I think it's important for this Celtic team to try to get a little bit of a cushion with Kobe resting. And the Lakers struggling at the line. Just 12 of 20. 12 of 21. 57 percent. All right, here's Davis. And a foul. A reach in is called. You missed nine free throws and you're only down two points. Kobe Bryant, seven of 20 with only 17 points. If I'm Phil Jackson, I'm pretty happy. Foul on Vujicic. Here comes Kevin Garnett, greeted by the crowd. Checks in for Big Baby Davis. Davis the other night came up with his first career double-double, played 42 minutes. Doc Rivers said we did not take him out of the second half. And he's not the model of health. <laughs> so perhaps we can get him to lose some weight by keeping him on the floor. Oh, House able to punch it inside to Poe. Which but Eddie House and Poe has been the bench tonight for the Boston Celtics. Odom. He is fouled. So Lamar will head back to the line. Foul on pole, that is his third. Well, especially with 
Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol on the bench. Only four shots tonight. Someone has to be aggressive with those two watching. Some program reminders, a look at the upcoming national TV schedule. Friday on ESPN, it's Denver and Washington, followed by Golden State and Phoenix. Sunday on ABC, the doubleheader, San Antonio playing the Celtics here in Boston. And then how about the Lakers going up against LeBron and the Cavaliers starting 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Tuesday on NBA TV Fan Night, Denver and Miami. Coverage starts 7 o'clock. Eastern time with NBA game time. Coach, you think LeBron was saying to Kobe, anything you can do, uh, I can do better <laughs> I don't know. with that performance in New York? Uh, LeBron's done some amazing things, that young kid. I just marvel at, uh, you know, having to follow Kobe in with a 61-point night with 52 and a triple-double. That's, uh, that's pretty good. That was a masterpiece uh, by <laughs> LeBron James. <laughs> Poe again! Ten points off the bench for Poe. So House and Poe have combined for 26 points. And the Celtics have an 87, 82 lead. Odom for three. Yes. <laughs> I think that's what Carl Malone has been wanting to see from Lamar Odom. Boston by two. Rondo playing with the four fouls. Banks one home. Very up. Very casually with that shot. And Phil Jackson is upset. Phil upset with his team. Took that timeout following the runner by Rondo. It's the Celtics by four. We'll be right back. It's time for tonight's U.S. Army strong performance of the night. And it's been the Celtic bench to Tusum of Eddie House, who has been on fire 4-5 behind that three-point line. 16 points on only nine shots in 18 minutes. And Leon Cole, who has been struggling to finish shots, looking for fouls. Doc Rivers says, just go up and finish. Don't worry about the fouls. He's done that tonight. He has 10 points and eight rebounds. In a little under 14 minutes, those two guys are 11 of 16, 26 points. And right now, they are the difference in the game and one of the reasons why the Celtics have a four-point lead. And it's not the big three that has led Boston to this lead. 13 of the last 15 points have come from others. Five-hour chase by House. Kobe Bryant remaining on the bench. Here is Odom with a long three and a foul. It is on Powell. A push out by Josh Powell. So the Lakers were their third team foul. The Celtics have two. What do you think that head coach Phil Jackson has to go to the letter of the law and keep Kobe Bryant under that eight minute mark, coach? I think that's what he's going to do. I think he wants him fresh for the finish. It's only a two-possession game. Make it that a three-possession game. Ray John Rondo on target with Kevin Garnett. Well, for a guy who came over to the broadcast table in the opening minutes of the game and said he was winded, uh, I think it's been a pretty, pretty nice night for Garnett. Well, he got his second win. Ariza. Rebounded by Rondo, and he's fouled by Powell. That's back-to-back -back fouls by Josh Powell. And you look at the last two possessions, and Boston has to be very happy. You've got Lamar Odom shooting a long jump shot under pressure, followed by Trevor Ariza, and that's what you would like if you're Boston. Those two guys shooting long jump shots. Well, the, the chippiness continuing here in Boston. Double technicals called on Powell. On Powell, I should say, and Poe. That's easy for you <laughs> <Yes>. to say. <laughs> 91 85, Boston. Seven and a half to play in the fourth. Kobe Bryant, Powell Gasol have returned. Rondo. And it's deflected out. Last touch by the Lakers. 
You know, Mark, a while ago I said after Garnett hit that shot, it was a three-possession game. It's a six-point game, but it's still only a two-possession game, so the Lakers still very much alive. Eight on the shot clock. Down to three, two, Allen. Rebound Gasol. Here's Odom getting inside. Nice entry pass from Fisher. That's what he has to do more of. Run the floor, sprint the floor. He's got good speed at that uh, power forward position. Now he should do a better job beating big men down the floor. And Lamar has come on here in the second half. 13 points in all. Garnett with the open shot. And this is time for Kobe Bryant to reassert himself at the offensive end. Doc Rivers staying with Rondo on Bryant. And a defensive three-second violation, which will lead to a technical foul. Now Paul Pierce, Kendrick Perkins check back in. <clears throat> so Bryant will shoot the technical. He's two of three at the line. The Lakers continue to have their problems at the line. And Mark, look at this in back-to-back -back games. It tell, tells you a little bit about the great conditioning of Kobe Bryant and 9-2, and two, and also the fact they go to that bench. In this ball game tonight, this is their third game at four nights in three cities. Vujacic from the elbow. And a foul. Stay right here, says the official Leon Ward, the call against the Celtics, it's on Perkins, that's his fourth. Now this is the lineup that Phil Jackson likes. When Vujicic is shooting the ball, this is so dangerous because you have Fisher and Vujicic out there at the guard position. Kobe slides down to the small forward, and this is the lineup that Phil likes. The big part of it is Vujicic has got to make shots for it to work. Third team foul on Boston. Lakers have four. Odom sweeping in. Odom with the rebound. Odom scores, and he is fouled. Where has he been? I mean, he has finally come on. I don't know if he got upset uh, getting knocked around inside, but he has gone to work here, and he's one of the reasons why the Lakers have erased this lead and have a chance here to tie this, or excuse me, pull within uh, uh, one point. Well, he's so talented offensively, he can change hands with the ball and finish. Garnett picked up his fifth. So five on Garnett, four piece on Rondo and Perkins. Odom with four and looking for the three point play. Lamar Odom with a superb second hand. 16 points in all. Nine have come here in the fourth. And it is a one point game. Here's Rondo. Once again, able to protect the ball and score to give the Celtics a 93 90 advantage. Just under six remaining of the fourth. Bryant passed on the three. And his shot has been off. Last touched by Odom. I think James Caper was going to call over the back on Lamar Odom, but just decided to say Celtics ball. Mark, the, the Celtics have done a great job tonight. Kobe, all of his jump shots, he's had a hand in his face, whether it be a switching big man, whether it's been Ray Allen. This time it was Paul Pierce. Every one of his shots contested. That's why he's 7 of 21 from the floor tonight. The England Patriots, Bill Belichick, Michael Bivens from New Edition. And... Uh, Chris Evans going in the new motion picture push, which Reggie informs me, <laughs> opens tomorrow at a theater near you. I wonder what his push predictions were for tonight's game. Well, he has a Celtic jersey on, so I'm assuming <laughs> he's thinking it's all for the Celtics. Boston by three, just under six left in the fourth. Rondo with another runner. That's 14 points for Rajon Rondo. The Celtics 95 and the late.
Lakers 90, Marv Albert, Doug Collins, Reggie Miller, Craig Sager here in Boston. Kobe Bryant knocks it down from downtown. He had only two field goals prior to that shot since the end of the first quarter. Rondo finding the room. Lakers trail by two. Luke Walton back on the floor. Garnett playing with the five and Gasol. <laughs> the chair. Yes. Pull the, the chair. chair. The old Rick Mahorn trick. Pierce. And that pass off the mark. Another one of those home run plays Doc Rivers talked about. Just make the simple play under pressure. Gasol's pass broke it up. Bad pass. Turnovers. Back to back turnovers for the Lakers. Garnett setting up on Gasol. Fisher went for the steal and a foul on Garnett. That's number six. And Derek Fisher did an excellent job of selling that foul right there. He had got a deflection off of KG, was going for the loose ball. And right here, as Derek Fisher comes over to help, you see the deflection there. Derek Fisher acts like he's going for the ball right there, sells it. And Kevin Garnett. We'll be watching the rest of this game. Four minutes and 22 seconds left. So Garnett coming back from the flu that sat out the previous two games, those 34 minutes. Hearing it from the crowd as he departs with 16 points, six rebounds, three block shots. Who's going to be able to execute under this pressure tonight? What we've seen is the last four possessions back-to-back -back turnovers by both teams. So who's going to be able to execute under pressure? You know the Lakers are going to play through Kobe Bryant and Pal Gasol. Only the second time that Garnett has fouled out this season. How about the confidence that Doc Rivers is showing in Big Baby Davis? Leon Poe, who's been having an excellent night tonight, 10 points, 5 of 7, 8 rebounds, 5 of them offensive, and he goes with Big Baby Davis. Davis defending. Odd Odom. Lakers in possession, trailing by two. Here's Gasol facing up. Odd Perkins. Fisher for three. Walton trying to back tap, kept alive. And Davis is on it. Good hustle play by Big Baby Davis. Woo, maybe that's why, coach. <laughs> Shot clock to six. And a reaching foul on Walton. These are the kind of plays that turn the game in your favor. The ball is in there. Who's going to scrum it out? And look at the big baby as he's coming right towards Reggie and I. And Marv did not even move to try to help us on that play. I had full confidence that the monitor would, would block big baby. <laughs> You know, the important thing is that you hang in to make the call. You got it. <laughs> You're a trooper. Just like a quarterback, you oh, understand yeah. that yeah. middle linebacker's coming in, you take the hit Absolutely. and deliver it. Lakers over the foul limit, but Pierce not able to take advantage. He's 6 of 8 from the line. He's missed his last two free throws. And he is an excellent foul shooter. Next foul will put the Celtics over. Boston by three. Three and a half remaining in the fourth. And how about the matchup at the defense event? Paul Pierce guarding Kobe Bryant. Bryant for three. And the game is tied at 96. He can miss 10 straight and think Absolutely. he's hot. That's the that's a beauty of great players. They don't even think about their last Absolutely. miss. It's next play. Next play. That's his third three-pointer Fisher jumping out on Pierce and Pierce threw the foul well, with a game of this magnitude that's a ticky-tack foul to be called this late as physical as this game has been all night you gotta let these two teams play it out that's the fourth on Fisher 
Don't miss an all-new episode of TNT's new hit series, Trust Me, Monday at 10, 9 Century. Central is what he said, only on TNT. Here's seven of nine at the line. He is an 86% free throw shooter. Paul Pierce averaging 19 and a half per game to lead the Celtics headed to the All-Star game for the seventh time in his career. Mark, how about this number? The Celtics are 20 and 0 this year at home when they shoot 45% or better. Tonight, almost 47%. Let's see if that stands true here once again. Just under three to go in the fourth. Bryant for Odom. And it's deflected out. Last touched by Odom, says Monty McCutcheon. Kobe got in the air that time, Reggie, and he was going to shoot it, and Paul Pierce chased him off the shot. It's one of the things you don't want to get hung up in the air, and he tried to get it to Lamar Odom, but that ball went off his hands. And Cole Bryant in the fourth quarter. I don't know, Coach, if there's a player that this cold-blooded just stares you down, raises up, and ties the game. From I mean, one cold-blooded shooter to another. <laughs> Wait a second. And much respect to number 24. 43 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Celtics with a two-point lead. Timeouts remaining. Each club two full. And uh, a 20. Both teams over the limit. What are you looking for? Well, when I look at Boston's lineup now, Mark, my concerns are you've got Rondo out there, who really is not a, a guy you look for a lot of offense, and you've got Big Baby and Kendrick Perkins on the floor. So basically, you've got two scores out there. So without Garnett on the floor, they're going to have to go to Paul Pierce here and Ray Allen to look for the points here for the Celtics. Here's play by Walton. Shot clock to seven. Pierce. Yes! A clutch shot for Paul Pierce. And the Celtics lead by four. And that was a nice green by Big Baby Davis. 20 points for Pierce. Gasol with the fake. Oh, what a move by Paul Gasol. Well, you got to remember, he had seven huge points down the stretch in that Christmas Day game. He had struggled all uh, game long on the 25th. See if he can assert himself tonight. Allen misfired on a three. Rebound Gasol. And the Lakers with a chance to tie or take the lead. Just under two to go on the fourth. Pierce on Bryant, shoots for three. Yes, another three for Kobe Bryant, who's come on here in the fourth quarter. It's the first time the Lakers have led here in the second half. Paul Pierce is going to have to crowd Kobe and make him put the ball on the floor and hopefully get some help. Pierce trying to shake off Walton. Davis not able to hit. See, the Lakers can clog the lane because they have three guys out there right now. They can't score. I'm surprised they don't maybe go put Eddie House out there and maybe go to a smaller lineup to get another shooter on the floor. Kobe Bryant has knocked down three threes here in this fourth quarter. Gasol sets the pick. Shot clock to seven. Bryant faces the double. Shot clock down to three. Gasol. Gasol with the rebound. And... It's a 24-second violation that did not make contact with the basket. That's one of those that Pau Gasol's got to go in and try to tear the rim down. You can't flip that shot because the Celtics were in a position they were going to have to foul. He sort of flipped one up there, and that's one of those plays that sort of aggravates Phil Jackson. He's played such a great ball game. But watch this as he gets in the lane. This was the pr previous possession here. We had beautiful footwork, the little floating right-hand hook. And then Kobe Bryant, this is third three, just steps back. Look at Paul Pierce, and he's got a hand in his face. I mean, that's just a great shot by a great, great player. Show Lakers plus six points off turnovers. Reggie, you talked about the energy and depth. Eddie House had 16 points uh, off that bench. Leon Poe had 10 for 26 for the uh, Boston bench. And can a bear be three of a kind? Brian gets sold 45. The Boston three stars 54. Garnett is fouled out. And coming out of this timeout, 
We're looking once again, Rondo Perkins and Big Baby on the floor, three guys who struggle to score. So can Paul Pierce and Ray Allen shake loose to get a good shot? Big Baby 0 for 5 on the night. We're down to 46 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The Lakers up by one. That Celtic 12-game win streak on the line. The Lakers have won their first four on the six-game road trip. Pierce guarded by Bryant, gives it up, and again it's Davis with the shot, and again he's off, but able to get back to it. Pierce with the drive, and draws the foul, so Paul Pierce will head back to the line. And I think they're calling the foul on Kobe Bryant right there on the drive, just nudged Paul Pierce a little bit as he went into that shot. But how about Big Baby Davis? Misses the shot, presence of minds, the following shot, and gives the Celtics another possession. Yeah, because he's the kid who gets down on himself. I and mean, that's one of the things the Celtics have really worked with him on is keeping his uh, confidence up when he struggles. Well, the confidence there here tonight in the fourth quarter. Paul Pierce now 9 of 12 at the line. He is an 85% free throw shooter so, you know what happens I'll tell you how this changes it if Paul Pierce makes this and it's a tie game you almost give Kobe almost a free look at a shot rather than trailing all of a sudden now the game is tied it's not looking to have to make a shot to take the lead a little, little different game pressure five second differential between the game clock and shot clock Lakers 101 Celtics 101. Shot clock to five. Bryant. Rebounded by Perkins. And a timeout called by the Celtics with seven and seven ten seconds remaining in the fourth. I'm not quite sure that was the shot Kobe wanted. I, I thought he wanted really just to dance on him and pull up. When Paul Pierce made him turn his back, it was to his advantage. Right there, Paul Pierce has the advantage. It looked like it was good, just a little bit short. All seven and seven ten seconds remaining. And the fourth quarter of the game is tied. It was just past Tuesday night in Philadelphia. It came down to a final shot, and Ray Allen was able to knock it down with five tenths of a second remaining. This after he hit a shot from three-point range with 31 seconds to go. And now what Boston's done, they've gone all small. So they have Eddie House who can shoot it. You've got Paul Pierce and Ray Allen, Rondo a penetrator, and Tony Allen, a guy who likes to drive. So they're going to put all kinds of pressure now on the Lakers to get a stop here with five guys who can all make a play. And Phil Jackson answers that by putting in Vujicic and taking out Lamar Odom. The chant of beat L.A. as Ray Allen gets set to inbound. Pierce down to five. Down to three. Two. Ball knocked away. Here's House. Flings it. And we are headed to overtime. That is off the palm of his head. You know what? We saw two great defensive plays. Paul Pierce on the previous bed session against Kobe and a great job by Kobe Bryant to knock that ball loose from Paul Pierce. Two great defensive plays. We head to a five-minute overtime session. Lakers and Celtics tied at 101. Only their second overtime game of the season. Uh, they lost to the Bobcats in double overtime at home. That was five games ago. Boston has won three or four wins at Milwaukee and Indiana here at home against the Pacers, and they lost at Charlotte. So three up and one down. Although overtime records have very little significance. Odom. Gives the Lakers a two-point lead. To me, it's going to be, can Boston score? I mean, that's what it's going to come down with. Kevin Garnett out. They're really missing that other offensive player on the floor. Garnett fouling out late in the fourth quarter. Rondo, a nice change of pace move. The game is tied at 103. Well, Rondo's that one X factor that the Celtics have. There's no one out there can match his speed. 
Yeah. Rondo has been hanging in after picking up a fourth foul early on. Here is Fisher with a rainbow back tap chased down by Bryant. Kobe getting the Lakers back into it, hitting three late three pointers in the fourth. Bryant comes up short. Perkins rebounds. I'm not quite sure if that didn't slip out Kobe's hand. Allen with the step. Allen with the bucket. Boston by two. This is where Vujicic not playing well hurts the Lakers because Luke Walton does not have the foot speed to play against Ray Allen. Bryant for three. Rebound handled by Gasol. A minute and a half gone by in overtime. Gasol. Little scoop shot has tied the game at 105. He's 9 for 13, 21 points. A little slow on the rotation that time from the weak side of Boston. The slip of the pick by Gasol, that defender from the Celtics. He's got to get there quicker. Allen chased by Fisher. Allen. Oh, he got the friendly run. Ray Allen doing a good job of not settling when he's coming off the screens for that shot. Doing a good job of driving the lanes, getting in to the paint and making something happen. 22 for Allen, Boston by two. This is not what Phil Jackson had in mind coming off the game in Toronto last night, going to overtime here in Boston. But he'll take it. Bryant for three. Celtics in possession, up by two with two and a half to go in the five-minute overtime. Kobe's trying to throw some overhand rights, two back-to-back -back three pointers, trying to daze the Celtics. Allen saves the pass. They double up on him. Rondo giving the shot. Perkins hanging in, and it's deflected out. Last touch by the Lakers. Good job by Kendrick Perkins. Well, that's the flaw in the Rondo's game right there. You can see once they backed off in the lane and they forced him to shoot that jump shot, you could just see when he shot it, he didn't <laughs> no, believe it. He no did not confidence. believe it. Zero confidence in it. Coming up on two minutes to go in overtime. Pierce. Two. Rebounded by Odom. Walton on the move. Has to kick it back. Here's Bryant. Draws the foul. It's a non-shooting foul. Don Pierce. And look at Rondo right here. First play of overtime. Just does a good job of accelerating. Get into the paint. And Ray Allen. Just one catch. A couple dribbles. Using the glass. Not settling for outside shots. But Paul Pierce is doing a great job on Kobe here in the overtime. Nice pass from Odom, and Gasol was able to stop. Now, that's the play they ran late in the game on Christmas Day where they trapped that pick and roll, and you flash a guy that time, Odom, and he gets Gasol. So that is a scouting report play, and that's what happened in Christmas Day. Lakers and Celtics tied at 107. This time, Davis gives it back. One on the shot clock. Here comes Fisher. Two on one. Has Bryant. Bryant for the trailer. Gasol. And a foul. It's a blocking foul on Boston. And Ray Allen was trying to take the offensive foul on Powell Gasol. And like you, Coach, Fish did a good job of making sure, Ray Allen, you hold on to the ball. Textbook fast break. You hold on to the ball. You make Ray Allen commit. Kobe does a good job of seeing the trailing big man coming down the lane. You reward him by giving the ball up. Gasol, three of five at the line, an 80% free throw shooter. However, he has missed his last two. Make it his last three. Lakers, 14 of 26 tonight. 53%. You can always tell when guys are nervous. They start pulling at their shirts and their shorts. And... <laughs> well, Kyle hits one of two. The Lakers have a one-point lead. Celtics call for time with a minute 11 left. In overtime, it's been a beauty here in Boston. We'll be back 
after this. Now look at the best records in the NBA in Boston on top. The defending NBA champions at 41 and 9. They have won their last 12 games. Their last loss to the Cavaliers in Cleveland in early January. And then the Lakers at 39 and 9, followed by the Cavaliers and the Magic. You know, Marvin Reg, one of the guys we haven't talked about tonight is Brian Scalabrini. And, and he's in the locker room. He's had a concussion and missed a few games. But he's a guy who's been in the rotation, and he plays that four spot, and he gives them a guy who's got a big enough body to play at that four, but he can also shoot the ball. And with Garnett being out now, and them having to play Perkins and Big Baby, they miss a guy who can make a shot at that position, and as a result, the Lakers are swarming that lane. Including tonight, he has now been out five straight games due to consecutive concussions within a three-day period. Lakers 108 and the Celtics 107 Boston ball in their front court with a minute 11 left in overtime. Rondo picked up by Odom. Davis with room. Good baby Davis has given Boston a one point lead. How about Doc Rivers? Confidence. Uh, he was 0 of 6 when he made that shot. You kept talking about him saying he couldn't make a shot, coach. <laughs> He's hot now. Now to 50 seconds. Shot clock to five. Ryan having trouble getting the shot off. Face down by Pierce. Again, Paul Pierce, excellent defense. Every shot has been tough in this overtime for Kobe. Half minute left in overtime. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Celtics with a one-point lead on the ball. Davis again with room. It's blocked by Gasol. The pass is broken up by a foul. Foul on Big Baby Davis as the shot was being blocked. Lamar Odom was trying to outlet the pass to Paul Gasol. Look at Paul Pierce and Kobe. This is an area of the game that Paul Pierce has really improved on. Kevin Garnett coming over here. Changed the culture of this team defensively. Paul Pierce's numbers are down offensively, but that is great defense. He's forced those kind of shots, and now Odom going to the line here. Uh, struggled all night. Boston over the limit, so here's Lamar Odom, just 5 of 9, and as you see, 61% on the season only 16 seconds remaining in overtime and the game is tied at 109 and again how big is this one if, the, if they miss then boston can hold for the last shot with a chance if you miss you go into ot if he makes it the pressure's on now you got to score the lakers up by one and doc rivers Takes a timeout. Time We're down to 16 seconds to go in overtime. Lakers 110, Celtics 109. He's saying that's not the rule. Well, Boston uses their final full timeout. They have a 20. Lakers have a full and two 20s. Celtics over the limit, and the Lakers also have a foul to give. Well, the situation again now is you know it's going to be Paul Pierce and Ray Allen are going to be the guys who try to get the shot. Yeah, but the question gonna... is going to be are the Lakers going to force it out of their hands to someone else? Big Baby's taking the Trey. last two jumpers, made one and got the other one blocked. I wouldn't be surprised, too. Ball ends up in Rondo's hands as well. This is a guy with exceptional speed. He can get to the rack. They got to be careful because with a foul to give, they can't hold it out and, and shortchange themselves. So they're going to have to do something a little quicker than they normally would. Pierce on the fake exchange, not able to hit. Rebound Rondo. We're down to five seconds. Down to four. Down to three. And a foul. They had that foul to give, though. Not a bad foul as Fisher went sliding into Rondo with three seconds remaining in overtime, and Fisher shake it up. Well, how about the Lakers electing not to take the foul on Paul Pierce's drive, and they save it on the second shot opportunity by the Celtics. 
And here, Derek Fisher just undercuts Rondo right there. He took a sneaker to the head. Yeah, but Kobe didn't know that they had a foul to give, probably, or probably forgot. Celtics take a timeout, so that was their final timeout, which means they must get the ball in bounds. And let's see if Doc Rivers goes back to that same small lineup he had, remember, in the last possession before reg of regulation. You got, I think, get Eddie House on the floor. You got to get a couple other shooters, maybe a guy who can set a screen, a big guy who can free you. But uh, again, the, the ramifications of this game, Marv, I mean, this could be the tiebreaker if both these teams would have uh, the same record. And if the Lakers win tonight, they go up, they would win the series 2-0 and have the tiebreaker. So the lot riding here in the last three seconds. All right, the Celtics come out with Pierce, Davis, Rondo, Allen, and House. Three seconds to go in overtime and the Lakers with that one point lead. And if you're the Lakers, everything, you switch everything on defense. And now you got Gasol's got to be able to get out and you got four smalls, so switch everything on defense. And three seconds is an eternity in the NBA. Ray Allen will put it in play. Bothered by Fisher. Davis gets it back. Here is Allen blocked by Gasol and the Lakers come up a huge victory here in Boston. They defeat the Celtics in overtime. 110 to 109. Doug, as you mentioned, should it be a Laker-Celtic final down the road? The tiebreaker goes to the Lakers for home advantage. The Lakers now have the best record in the NBA at 40 and 9 by percentage points over the Celtics. Kobe Bryant, the high man for LA with 26. Pau Gasol with 24. Lamar Odom finished strong with 20. Ray Allen leading the Celtics with 22. Let's go to Craig Sager. Well, first of all, Kobe, 48 minutes wasn't long enough for this game. We had to add another five. What happened in that last defensive possession when obviously Boston felt that there was a foul on Ray Allen? No, I don't think so. I want to, you know, it's, they, they're a physical team. They play physical. And, you know, that's the way the game goes. Sometimes you're going to get the call. Sometimes you're not going to get the call. You guys had a foul to give when Derek Fisher was there a second ago. How important was it to have that extra foul? It was very important. You know, we play smart down the stretch. And, uh, you know, that was a big foul to use. People before this game started were chanting, beat L.A., beat L.A. The atmosphere, obviously, your first time back since losing the NBA Finals last year. How big was this game for you guys? It was a big game. You know, we're obviously under man. I don't think anybody thought we were going to come in here and win. And we didn't play our best basketball at all. You know, not even close. Uh, but we still managed to win. A heck of a road trip so far. One more to go. Yeah, it's fun. All right, thanks a lot. Back to you, Mark. All right, thank you, Craig. A stirring game here in Boston. An overtime victory for the Lakers as they defeat the Celtics 110 to 109. Thanks to our producer, Scott Cockerell, our director, Renato Lowe, statistician, Brian Taylor. So the Lakers now have, at least for the moment, the best record of the NBA by percentage points over the Celtics. Again, the final in OT. L.A. Lakers 110, Boston Celtics 109. So for Doug Collins, Reggie Miller, Craig Sager, I'm Marv Albert saying so long from Boston. Coming up, Kevin Harlan, Mike Fratello in Salt Lake City. It's the Mavs and the Jazz.